speak of Italy, we think, we think of industry. When we think of India, we think as handicrafts. So, I want you guys to realize that even though Italy is known more for the industrial revolution and the industrial practice they use in design, and India more for handicraft, the truth is, Paula does not need an introduction, but from the time she has come to India many, many, many years ago, her only drive to India is because of the handicraft, because of the, because of the hand involvement in textile. So, Paula, don't you think it's, it's very different because that is your passion? Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky story because I think uh, uh, nothing is white or black. Uh, there is a lot of gray. We are gray in the middle of that, that uh, discussion. Um, and also, uh, there is a word very important that connects these two um, different uh, element, which is curiosity. So, I met uh, Mr. Seti, who became my, um, uh, my element to learn. My teacher, but teacher is a bad word, he's not a real teacher, but he teach me so many things. And I try to convince, going back to Italy, all my clients, which are uh, industry, that, you know, there is no this um, barrier between uh, industry and, and craft. Mm, craft can become an important, uh, uh, extraordinary element on some of my uh, industrial products. And the other side, uh, industry can, uh, can deal with the craft, uh, and they can, we can learn um, many things uh, from each other. The industry can learn, has to learn, to become flexible sometime, because, you know, I try also, after including all this craft in my life, I learn and I appreciate more and more imperfection, uh, imperfection is a word that the industry don't want to listen, but is sometimes very important. So the industry need to learn how to be more flexible, and the uh, craft uh, probably um, uh, accept the fact to produce in quantity that maybe normally they are not used to. I, I met... Um, in my life, a fantastic uh, ceramic man, very famous restorer in Florence, and he used to restore old ceramic. And uh, I asked him to make a tabletop for me, Blue Robbiano. Blue Robbiano is a blue, very famous blue, from uh, 300 years before, that the ceramists were making with powder, I don't know, with a kind of recipe to paint the back of the Madonna, all, all those round Madonna they used to put in the church. This, this guy was a restorer, so he knew how to make the recipe of this blue Madonna, the blue Robbiano. Make one tabletop, it was wonderful. I like it, and my clients were fantastically happy. So we ordered 100 table, this guy called me, eh, eh, insult me on the phone. He told me, never in my life I did twice the same object. How can you, how can you have the stomach to call me an eh, order to me 100 table? See, the life is also very... Uh, speech or something. But I remember one time for a very famous company called Baxter. Paula was looking for, when we were moving around, we went to the Park Hotel and we saw a beautiful chair and she was very keen to see what this technique is. It was a very heavy chair, maybe 90 kilos. Yeah. And it was made in casted. We, we found out the price and the price happened 
to be so steep because it was done by Subodh Gupta, a very famous artist of ours, somebody we are, I'm very proud of. But then Paula was so keen to use that technique. She said, let me send you a chair. And she sent me a leather chair and we said, okay, we'll try it. And, you know, I did check with Subodh about this and he said, okay, good, you know, you can make one or two like I have. We made that chair in a 90 kilos again in casted aluminium. And guess what? We sent it to Italy. We received an order of one container. And trust me, when you talk about craft and industry and everything, we have done almost 30 containers of a Paola Navone chair from India. Now, nobody knows it's from India. So I think that is really creditable to what Paola does. She puts India in touch with the best, most commercial successful people. Armani is one such case. When Giorgio Armani decided, this chair, this, 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 chair. Chair, this is the chair I'm talking about. If you go to the best fairs in the world in Italy, you will see this chair. I, I was like, I want to have a kind of portrait, Indian portrait of my chair. And then when my clients saw it, they become crazy, they start to order. Guy who made the chair was really not so happy because it was very difficult. At the end, it was a good business for all of them. This is another funny story. I was walking in the market, I don't remember, and I collected... It was Pahar Ganj, and this, this people who are listening to this don't go to Pahar Ganj a lot. <laughs> it's a small market that Paula wants to, even yesterday, she went, she only wants to go to Sadar Bazaar. How many of you have been to Sadar Bazaar lately? She wants to go to different markets behind Chandni Chowk to explore. So on one such thing, when she went to Pahar uh, well, I found those... Uh, bells. Gungru. She yeah. found Gungru's. Yeah, I came home with some of those things in, a, in my pocket and I said, Sunil, why you don't try to make a, a beautiful lamp for me? And, um, and they sell lamp, but how many of those gru gru you need to put? I said, well, I don't know, maybe a lot. Then the, they try, but the lamp doesn't stay flat, of course, but that is the part of the game. The groom groom were more heavy than one side and the other side. So we make the first one and then again also this become, became a product on this collection. So you know the versatility is that when we first met, uh, a lot of you I see familiar faces who are so well known in India but in design but the language is such that they are known by their signature. So if you are working in the lighting industry or the lamps industry, then, you know, people know that they have to come to you. But in Paola's case, you know, with Giorgio Armani, we had 72 products which made it to the final collection at Via Manzone in the first Armani Casa. Of course, it did not say made in India, but what was important was it was designed by Paola Navone and even that name did not figure there. It didn't matter. The fact is Paola was happy. She was, it was only 72 products from India, but she had maybe two, three hundred more from other, country, other countries. Yeah. But what's important for us is she gave us a shot at that. And what were the products? So we knew Paola, you know, when we went, I mean, Google wasn't that active or I wasn't that active on Google. So, but we found out that she's better known for furniture. Yeah. Initially. Uh, yes, uh, yes. And, and what she ordered from us was uh, placemats made of handmade paper for Giorgio Armani. We were doing, you know, there was, there's a horn collection which is very famous, which comes from the east of India. Uh, and, you know, that's what she used the horn to make uh, cutlery out of that. She did, she did very different things. She did a shawl, a handloom shawl uh, in wool from, uh, from Himachal. 
so these are the products that we had we also had the finest stitching india can do on on you know cushion covers which were selling for 300 pounds the same collection made it to harrods made it to selfridges made it to all the top stores a quilt we had that we designed was selling for 10000 dollars so we were not used to indian products selling at the best stores in the world but what did it take it took a paula navoni to come to india said that this is wonderful my client will love it the only thing she wanted always was the best quality and you know i mean many of you here know that it's possible to give the best quality if you get the price if you have a top design then that is becomes very easy yeah now the market uh, thanks god is changing is uh, more deep, more different my main when i start to come to india uh many years ago people you, you very important buyer from a big buyer from all over the world were coming to india to buy chip uh you know they you give me this basket you take out the handle uh, instead of 120 is one uh, i always felt this exercise very uh disgusting somehow um and i have to say also that i also always work with client good client who were listening to me and also ready to pay a little bit more and with the sunil help we really uh, show to the world that you can make fantastic product sometimes with very simple material or simple technique etc you need to acknowledge that the, uh, there is a value on that time that people spend to work etc so uh, the client have to pay what is uh, normal to pay i mean uh, and this i was very lucky because nobody was uh, squeezing me from that point of view and i was able me to squeeze sunil to make more 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 <laughs> well, also you know interestingly one of the other places we went to may i have a show of hands how many people have been to the streets of chandni chowk lately so i it's only maybe 5 or 7 or 10% of the people here but paula prefers to go in a rickshaw stop at any interesting place pick up a product so one of the places we went to had a shop which was only selling ganga jal and lota and everything for different purposes so she found a lota and she said oh wonderful and there were lotas in different sizes there were commanders there were different things so she picked up every single shape of the lota not that it was the first time a foreigner had discovered lota and talked about it but paula came with fresh eyes to find that lota took it back and designed a whole new collection of flower pots mm. and flower arrangements and, yeah. and flower vases mm. in the ways the only change she made was instead of making it the brass lota that we find everywhere or the copper utensil she made that into a into a silver plated product and then added her bells and whistles and a signature tusk a uh, signature style and that really sold very well for us yes as well yes so i think you know when you talk about the passion in design whether it's for the industry or whether it's the craft passion doesn't come easy passion comes only if you are ready to explore she is not ready to sit in our air conditioned office space and see the products she wants to go to muradabad she wants to go to firozabad she wants to go to jaipur to see the hand paid paper industry she wants to go and explore textiles and the fact is that she always discovers a textile which is closest to a style while i am wearing italian shoes and maybe a japanese jacket and i still wear india on my sleeves and i wear every indian designer for sure but it could be only one of the five things i i wear but with paula she only prefers to dress india not in india 
but all over the world. But what I'm saying is that she loves India that much and that is the reason why we feel so happy. And one color, you talked about the blue color that your yeah, client had chosen. It's a little different from a blue, but with yeah. Paula, shades of blue is what she talks about and not shades of gray. When she talks about the shades of blue, you can see whether it's in the ring or whether it's in her yeah. sandals or whether it's... Most of her collections are in the blue color. And, and I discovered last night what is the blue in... In Hindi? In, the, in India? Yes. It's called Neel or Neela. Neela. I have my blue. <laughs> so Neel. So Neel. So yeah. I, so I, you know, in order to get some more business from her in the blue color, last night I explained to her over dinner that, you know, because she only talks about blue in the collections also. So I said, good, I'm the one who will make it because my name is Sue Neil. Neil is blue and Sue means good. So, you know, you can't get a better guy to make a blue color for you. So sorry, all the other prospective people here who want to do more collections with her, <laughs> I will be involved. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think uh, thinking about the previous uh, also intervention, I think we, there is one uh, point that I want to uh, explain to the designer. Uh, the act of designing, uh, as they say, is a kind of synthesis. You need to take decision and every decision has a consequences. So, we cannot approach design uh, in the same way. When I, do, when I design a collection for Italian manufacturers, I need to be uh, very uh, disciplined. We need to be very disciplined. You work with leather, so you have to make all your efforts to um, produce something that the factory, which is your client, uh, accept, produce well, produce in big quantity, make money, and be happy. And you also happy. When uh, you design uh, accessory or, or, or you design uh, in this way, let's say street design, when we do that, is we are much more free because we can do what uh, we like, what we want, and then this exercise becomes a product. And uh, somebody else, uh, maybe, look at this product and decide to sell. But this is a very different attitude. In one uh, way, in one case, you are very free, so you take the bell and you make a lamp. Uh, in the other side, you really need, you have a responsibility. A lot of people work in that factory, that machine are doing something and not something else. So, uh, we cannot believe that everything is so fancy. Uh, Paula, lately, I don't, I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of us don't know that from making furniture and making products and using India, Paula has graduated for the last 10 years maybe in specializing in hotels. So one of the hotels I did with her only because it was easy to work from India was in Bhutan. One of the best hotels at that time was uh, Uma Paro and uh, Paula designed that hotel and we were lucky to get our products in there. But after that, she has really done hotels all over the world. So, would you like to tell them a little because that's what your main projects uh, that are keeping you busy these days? I have to say that I love very much to design interiors. Uh, not, not private interior, but uh, public interior. So, we, are a lot, we have a lot of projects in, in the hotel industry. And, uh, and that is, again, another exercise of design. 
because unlike in the factory where you need to follow certain rules, when you design environment, you are totally free. And I really like to be free because I can use a lot of uh, uh, imagination. So uh, uh, my way to design hotel is like uh, I'm writing a movie for the, to be film. One film is about the war, the other movie is going to be love, the other movie is going to be something else. This is an example of a Pointiamo Hotel. This is in Phuket. This is the lobby. This is one of the very impressive wall in the lobby. And maybe we can talk about recycle because today is also important not to have waste, not to destroy material. This wall is huge, it's uh, two walls in the lobby, uh, 150 square meter. For this hotel we design everything and it's made in Thailand. Also the, the cup, uh, the cutlery, the uh, everything. But do you think that you know, the way life is going on, uh, people, will sustainability stay? Look wait, what's happening uh, I, in the I, West. I think there are two points. One point is I do these crazy things and my, I start to do privately. And then my last uh, public client, we open a hotel in Florence, 25-hour uh, hotel, the name San Paolino Firenze. And they love so much, so they want to me to, they, they put in the contract that I have to provide X percent, a lot of money, on the recycle. So I, for two years I bought, I bought, I bought, but you know, in the restaurant, in the lobby, I have 200 shares uh, that were not, uh, not, not new. I bought it and then it's a big job because you have to buy, then you have to clean a little bit and then sometimes you have to paint and sometimes you have to put all the new cushions, so crazy job. At the end I told I will never do that anymore in life another time because it's so big trouble. I signed a contract for new hotel in Porto and again, they put me this clause in the contract, you have to put X percent of, the, of this. So it's become a little bit of an idea of my work in the public space. Everybody talk about uh, sustainability, everybody talk about recycle, which fine, I, I not only I, I agree, but I also like, because I did that all my life. But I think there are two points if we really want to be serious on that uh, story and not, not just talking because it's uh, fashion to talk. Number one is education. Education, education. You have to, the small child, they have to learn. They have to learn, and they have to learn, and they, they become adult. In the meantime, they learn, and they can also a little bit teach to parents, because sometimes the parents are not so conscious. So the small child, uh, children become adult, and I hope the world is going to be better. A second very, very big point, which is uh, I would like uh, you to think about, is uh, it's totally useless to talk about uh, sustainability, good painting, recycle the chair, if we don't stop war. <laughs> because one single bomb in Ukraine produce so much garbage for the environment that you can save all the chair Very in Nova Delhi. Point. All the Very chair in Nova Delhi for another 20 years is still less. So uh, we need to be a little bit uh, more uh, conscious on. So in the future, will you, you know, um, I see a few of us who are designers of Indian products. 
do you also plan to do an Indian hotel? Because when <laughs> you do an Indian hotel, we can use so many people out here know, who will be you. able to get one or the other item. We can see a carpet person right away. If we do, here. I will love this is my next dream. I have two next dream. One to do an Indian hotel and it's going to be 120% made in India for sure. We are not going to buy Italian uh, furniture. Uh, second, mm, I want to make a small, very small project, uh, nil. But, but also, you know, just like you talked about a special blue, which existed 150 years ago in the West. You yes. mentioned that in the beginning. Yes. Even in India, there is a separate Delhi blue, there is a separate Jodhpur blue, yeah. there is a separate Champaran blue, because indigo blue. Blue. blue is a word, is a kind of... Uh, uh, atmosphere is a planet is every can be everywhere yeah well I, I see Asian paints Mr. Is the Singhal here is the, who's is done. the color of the water is the color of the sky is the color of the sea is the you know so Mr. Singhal has promoted blue and even if when it wasn't the color of the year he made it the color of the year for India I remember that and it did extremely well and he's himself here in shades of a light blue. So, you know, we, I think we have many people who support the blue color in India. Good. So, big, I think, uh, you know, big group of people can work on, that, on my next hotel, uh, India hotel. Thank you very Thank much you for being patient and listening to us. I hope you found it interesting. Thank you.